Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial in administrative law. So today I will be talking about the grant of leave in judicial review proceedings. First and foremost, I'd like to request you to go back to the tutorial that talks about judicial or um, that talks about the leave stage um, in judicial review. So the reason as to why I'm emphasizing is because no judicial review can be made unless the leave stage of the high court has been obtained. So before leave is granted, the affected individual must have been granted legitimate expectation by the decision maker that something was going to be done of which the public authority has failed to fulfill. It is from this background that the court is able to grant leave, but even then there are certain elements that the affected person has to show before leave is granted. So these elements include locus standi, promptness, and arguable case. So go back to the tutorial on leave stage so that you understand better. So let's talk about the concept of legitimate expectation. So a concept which has been fashioned to help identify interest of administrative authorities and affect individuals deserving legal protection is the concept of legitimate expectation. So basically, legitimate expectations, uh, expectation refers to the principle of good administration or administrative fairness. So if a public authority leads a person or body to expect that the public authority will in future continue to act in a way either in which it has uh, regularly um, acted in the past or on the basis of a past promise or a statement which presents how it purposes to act, then prima facie, the public authority should not, without an overriding reason in the public interest, um, result uh, or go away from the, the, the representation and unilaterally cancel the expectation of um, the person or body that the state of affairs will continue. This is of particular importance if an individual has acted on the representation or to his or her Detriment. So basically the concept of legitimate expectation made its first appearance in the case of um, Schmidt versus Secretary of State, wherein it was held that an alien who was granted leave to enter into the United Kingdom for a limited period had legitimate expectation of being allowed to stay for the permitted period. So a legitimate expectation arises where the citizen has been led to achieve, um, to believe by a statement or conduct of the government that he is singled out for some benefit or advantage of which it would be unfair to deprive him. The expectation might be generated by a promise or assurance either announced generally or given specifically to an individual. So the public authority must create an expectation in the mind of an individual. It may happen that the public authority by an express undertaking or past practice or a combination of the two has represented to those concerned that it will give them a right to be heard before it makes any change in its policy upon a particular issue which affects them. If so, it will have created a legitimate expectation that it will consult them before making changes. So in Council of Civil Service Unions and others versus Minister for Civil Service, it was held that the trade unions would have had a legitimate expectation that they would be consulted uh, before the terms of employment were changed. But the fact that the considerations of national security prevailed so you can look at, as was stated by Lord Diplock in the same case as mentioned, um, the decision must affect such other person by depriving him of some benefit or um, an advantage which either he has in the past been permitted by um, the decision maker to enjoy and which he can legitimately expect to be permitted to continue to do until there has been communicated to him some rational ground for withdrawing it on which he has been given an opportunity to comment or um, he has received assurance from the decision maker that the benefits of advantage will not be withdrawn 
without giving him first an opportunity of advancing reasons for contending that they should not be withdrawn. So basically, the key feature of Lord Diplock's concept of legitimate expectation is that it focuses upon the conduct of the decision maker. It is the expectation created by his conduct which creates the legitimate expectation which in turn provides the justification for judicial intervention. So the existence of a legitimate expectation may have a number of consequences. So firstly, it may give a local standard, a local standard to a claimant to seek leave to apply for judicial review. And secondly, it may mean that the authority ought not to act as to defeat the, that expectation without justifiable cause. It may also mean that before defeating a person's legitimate expectation, the authority should afford him an opportunity of making representation on the matter. So the claim based on legitimate expectation can be sustained and the decision resulting in denial of such expectation can be questioned provided the same is found to be unfair, unreasonable, arbitrary or violative of principles of natural justice or natural justice in simple terms. So the doctrine of legitimate expectation under Zambian jurisdiction is something that is quite interesting. So, as I have stated, I hope you've managed to follow every um, aspect and the notion of judiciary review mentioned. So, I'll, get, I'll now go straight to the doctrine of uh, legitimate expectation under the, Zamb uh, the Zambian jurisprudence. So, basically, um, despite the importance of the doctrine of legitimate expectation in the development of law on judiciary review, there are a few reported Zambian judicial decisions on this branch of law. So, for example, the People uh, versus the Attorney General ex parte Frederick um, Jacob Titus Chiluva. The applicant has had his immunity removed when the National Assembly passed a resolution under Article 43, um, Clause 3 of the Constitution, so that he could be prosecuted on criminal allegations. It was argued by counsel for the applicant that there was a legitimate expecta expectation as demanded by the rules of natural justice that the applicant was going to be given the right to be heard. So uh, basically this kind of uh, shows some features as mentioned in, uh, by Lord Diplock. So in the same case of the people versus Chiluva, uh, versus Chiluva on appeal to the Supreme Court, it was held that there is nothing in Article 43 to suggest that before lifting the immunity of a former president, the National Assembly should give the former president the opportunity to be heard, and that the National Assembly is not obliged to um, religiously follow its own rules of procedures. So arising from this decision, it can be submitted on the question of procedure that the Supreme Court failed to appreciate um, basic principles of natural justice, thereby not upholding the legitimate expectation of the right to be heard. So therefore, it can be submitted that legitimate expectation in Zambia may be found on judicial decisions as well as the rules of natural justice. Furthermore, there is a little literature on the subject. It is recommended that the use of the doctrine um, as a ground for judicial uh, for review uh, be encouraged particularly through ad academic writing. So you just do your research and then you get to understand more on um, how it is argued. So since the rules on standing in Zambia are not sufficiently um, liberal, the doctrine can be used to give locus standard to a claimant to seek leave to apply for judicial review. So as explained, that's basically and the way it is in Zambia. So I'll go to um, talk about the rationale for obtaining leave in judicial review proceedings. So basically, the, the granting of leave to apply for judicial review is of importance in judicial review proceedings, as no application for judicial review will be heard without leave of court. So again, I would recommend you to go back to the uh, tutorial that talked about the judicial review, uh, the leave stage in judicial review. This is, in that tutorial, I explained how um, a party can sustain or fully establish 
um, a leave stage from, uh, in the courts of law. So a necessary first step is to obtain leave of the court, which will be granted only if an arguable case is shown. So basically, this is, has been stated in many um, academic writings and many um, lawyers have written about this. So an, an application to the High Court must be made in accordance with the procedure known as an application for judicial review. The requirement for leave to apply for judicial review um, gives the courts control over the proceedings from the beginning and because the respondent does not have to appear at the leave stage, the court is relieved of the need to take any steps to get weak um, claims struck out. So perhaps the feature of application applications for judicial review which most distinguishes them from other proceedings is that the leave of the High Court has to be obtained before they can be commenced. So an application applications for leave to apply for judicial review are made ex parte, which means without um, involving the other party. So the proposed respondents to any applications are not necessarily put to any trouble or expense at this early stage. Again, I recommend you go back to the tutorial that talks about um, the leave stage. So the court may, however, adjourn the application for um, leave in order that the proposed respondents may be represented to, to object if need and to give any reasons why the action should not be allowed to commence. This application is normally made to a single judge who needs to hold a hearing unless requested and not um, sit in an open um, court. So um, authors and judges have argued in many times that the requirement of leave st stage is necessary in order to eliminate frivolous, vexatious or hopeless applications without the need for inter-parties judiciary review. So for example, Mlenga S. Kapilima and on judiciary review and protection of, I, of um, human rights in Zambia also stated the same. So this actually shows and it's really important. Again, I recommend that you look at judicial review, uh, the, the, the tutorial on the leave stage for it provides a lot on what it, it provides a detailed um, explanation on what um, the leave stage is for um, just providing the um, gist of uh, what a leave stage is about. So let me continue so that everyone understands. So that's the, in line with what I've stated. The leave stage is used to identify an early stage claims which may be trivial or without merit. So the need for leave empowers the court to dispose of application for judicial review summarily without taking evidence of hearing submissions of the body alleged to have acted unlawfully. So it's, um, it is meant to um, protect public bodies from uh, being harassed by applicants uh, making ill-funded allegations. So this can be observed in the case of R versus um, Inland Revenue Commission of Self-Employed Small Businesses in which Lord Diplock um, op um, opined that leave prevents the time of the court being wasted by busy bodies with misguided or trivial complaints or of administrative Error and to uh, to remove the uncertainty in which public officers and authorities might be left with no whether they could um, with uh, uh, to whether they could safely um, proceed with administrative action while proceeding for judicial review of it were actually pending even though misconceived. So take a look at the case in which Lord Diplock um, submitted his opinion on the leave stage. So further, um, in the case of R versus City panel on takeovers and um, mergers ex parte Guinness PLC, it can be noted that the leave stage assists a case flow management as it ensures prudent management of limited uh, judicial resources. 
So the leave stage therefore assists case load management by de deterring um, and meritorious, uh, meritorious um, applications with the minimum use of resources. However, there is a number of evidence to suggest that without a leave requirement, um, settled patterns and judiciary view would differ significantly from those commenced by um, the writ. So another function of judiciary view is the protection of administrative bodies by being required to send a notice to the defendant um, that leave has been granted. This might assist the respondent in deciding how to react to legal challenge and it might buy time as when permission has been granted. The respondent might, may, might become aware that they may um, incur costs which might act as an incentive to settle the issue privately. Hence, perhaps the High Court rate of withdrawals um, as it is. So the leave requires requirement, uh, requirement benefits both parties. Um, basically, in short, um, the leave requirement benefits both um, parties. As for an applicant, it is remarkably quite uh, quick, cheap, and easy. So those are kind of the advantages which are brought by um, the leave stage. So to sum up, it, uh, to sum up, according to the case of the People versus Zambia Police for um, Force Experte, Rajan and Lakek Mohatan, um, and so Dr. Sangwa, and Dr. Sangwa, sorry, um, it was submitted in the ruling in the ruling that the purpose under Order Fifty Three Fourteen Twenty One for granting leave to apply for judiciary review is to eliminate vexatious or hopeless applications without the need for substantive interparty.